Hello. If I look really tired, it's because I am. This is where podcasting would come in handy. You don't have to see me, but alas, here we are. Today's video is for the moms. I mean, I guess it could be for anyone, but it's definitely for moms. So I want to tell you a little story first. All right. About one year ago, I was struggling with postpartum issues. I wasn't clinically diagnosed with postpartum depression. So call it whatever you want. PPD, baby blues, call it what you want. But I was struggling, struggling with my image, with time management, just emotions. Like I was just struggling. So I spent a, a little while struggling. I got out of it. Like the postpartum issues, the hormone craziness went away, but I still uh, wasn't feeling too good about myself. Then one of my good friends had just had her third baby and was thriving in life, was like killing it in all the ways. I'm like, what? How? How did your life get easier? And she told me about a podcast. Obviously, I've talked to you guys about Jodi Moore. I've talked about things that she talks about in her podcast. I'm a big fan. I kind of just got the kick in my pants, thanks to my friend's example, to find a way, make the time to do the things that I wanted to do. Uh, one of the things that I wanted to do is feel better about myself <laughs> and lose weight, lose baby weight. So I started working out every day and I started listening to podcasts and conference talks while I was getting ready and while I was working out, while I was cooking dinner, basically any second that I didn't need to be paying attention to my kids, I was listening to something that was motivating me, uplifting me. I also took that time to work out and I kind of prioritized my day and, and my life really. Wanted time for my husband. I wanted time to homeschool Ireland. I wanted time to go outside and enjoy the nice weather. All these things, right? I don't know about you, but I'm a control freak. I'm a planner. I am a list maker. So I planned out every hour of my day. Now for some people that's going to be excessive and that might backfire a little bit because you might not be able to accomplish all the things or you might get outside of your schedule and that can do more harm than good. But for me, it was important that I just prioritized what was most important. And one of those things that I prioritized was myself and having that time for myself. But then as time went on, it became time for me to pack and move to Arizona. And that in and of itself, like preparing for that move, psyched me out. Mentally, I started to lose it because I knew I was going to be without my husband. I knew I was going to be living with my in-laws. There were a lot of things about our future that were very unknown. And that was very scary. Again, control freak. So then my attention got turned towards that stuff. And I was basically in survival mode, which a lot of moms feel like they are in constantly, 24 seven in survival mode, waiting until dad gets home at night, just trying to not lose our minds and take it out on our children. So then I, I was here and I was so happy, like so happy, but also I was just surviving. I was surviving being without my husband, surviving living with my in-laws, surviving the uncertainties of our future. So many questions, so many things up in the air, not having my own space. There were just a lot of difficult things that happened during that time. And because I was just trying to survive, I wasn't remotely focusing on myself. Every now and again, I would work out, but that was probably like out of a total of all of October, November, December, and January, four months, I probably worked out four times, maybe, maybe three. That went out the door. I stopped listening to podcasts because I never had a moment to myself ever. I was either in one room with my children and my husband or in a big house with at least six other people. Uh, you think, what about when driving, when you're in the car? I used that time to talk to my friends because that was the only time that I had that people weren't listening and bothering me or interrupting me. And so bottom line is I was surviving. I was struggling. And I totally let myself go. Wasn't a priority anymore. So then, again, we were busy packing and moving and making preparations for coming to our home, which is great. We finally move into our home. It's so exciting. Decorating and packing, getting things settled. And I found myself being really grumpy. CJ always says attitude of gratitude. And so I'm sitting here like counting my blessings, so freaking grateful, pinching myself every second of the day 
looking around me being like, oh my gosh, I can't believe this is my life. And yet I still didn't feel happy. I wouldn't say I wasn't happy. I'm just going to say I was grumpy. I felt like I was in a rut because overall super happy with my life. So blessed, like too good to be true. Couldn't even believe it that this is my life, but I was just off. Then I looked at my calendar and I was like, oh, I don't have anywhere I need to be, anything I need to do today. What did I used to do before I had things I needed to do and I had space and I was in charge of my life <laughs> and it was things that actually helped change my life. What I'm going to talk about now, thriving versus surviving. Thriving, from my perspective, is doing things that help your body, your spirit, your brain to grow and improve. So a lot of times when moms and women talk about self-care, it's in terms of, I need a break from my kids. I want to go take a bath. I want to go out with my girlfriends. I want to go get my nails done. I just need some me time. 100% valid. Take your time. Have you time. But those types of things make you feel better for like that hour, that day, maybe even that week. But it doesn't actually change your life. Going to therapy, exercising, self-help books, podcasts, scripture study, conference talk, listening, things that are like actually going to really affect you not only that day, but like for the rest of your life. The reason why I think physical exercise and movement, whether it's yoga or going for a walk or whatever exercise movement thing you want to do is so great is because it releases endorphins and it gets your blood moving, gets you sweating, and that helps to literally move stuff around in your body. And what are our emotions, if not excretions of hormones and chemicals? So getting things moving can really help change all that. The biggest thing you can do if you are depressed is get out of bed and move, exercise, move your body. So I think that's like crucial, but also finding something that whatever it might be that works for you to truly change your life. And it's, it's all about you. It's not about my checklist of things that I need to do for my husband, for my house, for my kids, for my business, for church. It's just about you becoming a better person and taking care of yourself. I talked about this on my Instagram story, so some of this is going to be repetitive for you. Something that I realized is that as fulfilling as it is for me to check things off my list, an accomplished to-do list is never actually going to fulfill me as much as I'm going to fulfill me. A to-do list and accomplishing all those tasks is never going to give me the peace and the comfort and the motivation for life as taking care of myself is. So the things can wait. You might have to wake up before your kids. I guess you're going to have to sacrifice sleep. The things that you want to get done, like cleaning your house while your kids nap, I guess the house is going to get sacrificed so you can take care of yourself. Spending time with your husband at night after your kids go to bed might have to get sacrificed for an hour, 30 minutes, 20 minutes. I don't know what you need but you have to prioritize yourself every single day. It can't be something that happens once a week, once a month. It's got to be consistent because you need it and because you deserve it. You cannot take care of anyone else and pour out of an empty cup. You just can't. There's nothing left to give. So you got to do it. You can't wait on someone else. You can't be seeking the validation and the appreciation and the compliments from someone else because it's never going to fix you. It's never going to fulfill you. Like Frozen 2 says, you are the one you've been waiting for. It is up to you to discover yourself and pursue yourself, prioritize yourself. So talking about the to-do lists reminds me of a podcast from Jodi Moore. And she talks about results versus values. And basically what she said is that we are often looking for and prioritizing and focusing on the results, which in my case, I'm going to call the to-do list. The results are, I got all the things done that I wanted to. My kids went to this, my kids did that, my house looks this way, I got this done, I brought this this place, blah, blah, blah. These are all the results that I'm looking for. And a lot of the time, those results that you want are seated in a value that you have. Like, what is the value that I have? That education is really important. And using your brain and your skills and talents and abilities is important. It's a way to show respect for God. So what does that mean? That means I make my kids study. That means I make my kids practice instruments. That means I make my kids do sports or 
you know, I don't want to say make as enforcing them, but it's something that I'm doing during my day. And what is a good result? That my kid got an A on her test or she was able to memorize these things, whatever. You know what the results are. The results are that you got what you wanted. But sometimes those results come at a cost. And if you are the cost, it's not worth it. I don't care how great the result is. I don't care how great the value and the motivation is behind it. If you are sacrificing your mental health, it's not worth it. Now I'm not talking about like, oh, well, I didn't get an A and I, you know, killed myself working so hard and studying to get that A. So that means I'm just not smart and I'm not going to try anymore. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about not letting results be more important than you. Not letting things that while they matter, they really don't matter. You know what I mean? She mentioned in the podcast, um, reading scriptures and you know, at what cost do we accomplish and get that result? We're screaming, we're fighting, we're miserable. The spirit's definitely not in our home. So is that really the result then? Is that really accomplishing something? Yeah, we read our scriptures, but did we get anything out of it? Did we feel closer to God? Did we feel closer to each other? Did we actually learn anything? Did we feel the spirit at all? No, that doesn't mean, okay, I'm going to give up reading my scriptures. But the point is, what is actually important? Is reading your scriptures important? Yes. But if you're not getting the result you should be, you got to go about it a little differently. You got to change something up. So if accomplishing your tasks on your to-do list is important to you, but you are surviving, not thriving, find a different way. You need to thrive. You need to take care of yourself. You will not be the mom you want to be, the wife you want to be, the woman you want to be if you're not taking care of yourself. A lot of times we feel lost and we look for something to kind of fulfill us in retail therapy or a man or some sort of accomplishment like checking off all the things on our to-do list. And it might feel good, but again, that is fleeting. It doesn't actually help you to love yourself and be your best self. So the problem is that I don't have the answer for you of what you need to do. (laughs) For me, I know that podcasts, getting my brain thinking, moving my body, and conference talks are so rejuvenating to me and help me and motivate me to be a better person and to keep going and change things about myself so that I can be the best I can be. It doesn't have to do with changing anyone else or adding more to my to-do list. It's all about what's happening inside of me and what I'm doing for myself. So whatever that looks like for you, I don't know. You got to find it, but please, please do it. Don't let yourself get empty. Don't lose yourself. You are the one you've been waiting for. It's all on you. No one can do it for you. I hope you found this helpful. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye.